Oscar Romeo Golf, request start up clearance, please. Oscar Romeo Golf, I have your clearance. Oscar Romeo Golf is cleared to Vienna, across Epsom, above to Dover. Climb according to London radar instructions. Roger, Oscar Romeo Golf is ready to taxi. Ladies and gentlemen, our time from London to Vienna will be two and a quarter hours. We are now climbing to 21,000 feet. Morning, sir. What's this? Vienna holiday plans? The Met people say we'll get a good view of the Danube before we land. But here's where you really get the feel of Vienna. You'll have to learn to waltz while you're in Vienna. It's the city of waltzing, music and dancing, and all sorts of lovely things for little girls. Johann Strauss, the musical architect, if there is such a thing, of Vienna, he really was. Vienna was always rich in great musicians and the music that accompanies high romance. But stubbornly, it isn't the lofty Mozart, mostly, who strums out the song of Vienna that catches the heartbeat of the couples who go for a fiaca ride. It's those Strauss melodies that got themselves built into Kartnerstrasse and the Kohlmast, where you shop and disport yourselves. Five centuries of Viennese art and craft and culture have filled the famous buildings with singing memories. They rank with the rich museums that abound in the city the Habsburgs so richly adorned. But museums can keep until another day. We're off to the Prater, where today there's a trotting race. You pays your money and you takes your choice. You've got handicaps and varying distances, with a starting barrier on wheels and on the move as policemen and punters look on. some people, this is excitement. To that fictional symbol of Vienna, Harry Lime, this might have its appeal. As this did, and as it still does, Vienna's big wheel. For over 60 years, this slow-moving wheel has given a view 250 feet high over town. You can see the whole city of lullaby and laughter from here on a clear day. It was Maria Theresa's son, Joseph II, who hacked down a hunting forest here to pave the way for today's amusement park, from the top of which you can see stork nests on the chimneys of Rust, a village 20 miles away. Fairyland, that's what it is. And these are Vienna's vineyards. Remember, Vienna's homegrown name is Wien, which in many languages means wine. It's wine with a romantic difference, this wine. When it's ready, they sell it on the premises, hoisting a bunch of fir needles to the rooftop to tell passers-by that the farm is now a wine house for a season. Come here and buy a glass from this local grapevine, but bring your own food, because it's not a restaurant. the Danube, one little canalized arm of it that still flows through the city it used every year to swamp. They've channeled the main stream away, making an island pleasure ground where you can swim and bask and really play. Here you may find romance, but it's etched in the walls of the Schönbrunn Palace that you will see the romance of history. Habsburg romance, and grinding that back into history, the memory of quadrupartite power after World War II. The Russian war memorial reminds us that Vienna is not many miles from that east-west frontier curtain that they say is iron strong. But Vienna, as ever, means music out in the open air. Just see.
music, 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 and the crowds gather. The Gothic stones of old Vienna would crumble if they weren't vibrant with the throb of some orchestral memory. Song, wine, and women. Wine, women, and song, that's the Vienna story. Those are the authentic tales from the Vienna woods. For that's where we are at this moment, in one of the Heuringer, the wine houses you find there. Carefree as you would have found them years ago. Anton Karras and his zither might still be here. Anton Karras? What have I said? of fancy must end. It's time for touchdown. Goodbye. You'll enjoy Vienna, I think.